These things are Sag City. They are a generous helping of sagaroni and cheese. The three of these could band together and form a musical troupe that would travel through the South and call themselves the Saggy Bottom Boys. John here guys, and today we're talking about the new Beta FPV Meteor 65. And Cliff's notes, guys, there is a lot wrong with this thing as it ships. And let's just go through this train wreck of a release. Now, I was just saying the other day how it seemed like this winter there had been no new whoops, brushless, brushed, or otherwise. So what were we to do now that winter was coming and now that we are in the thick of winter, there's really only been two notable releases with possibly a third on the way. And they are the Happy Model Mobula 6, which is still very, very hard to come by. Um, this Beta PV Meteor 65, which has released, uh, released around the week of Black Friday. And then there is some buzz that Newbie Drone is going to be putting out a new brushless model. Now, some of the issues that are very apparent as soon as you try to fly this thing are that while it does come with this new BT 2.0 connector that is sort of like a very tiny XT30 connector, this connector and battery in itself has been somewhat of a mini controversy. This package does ship with an adapter to allow you to adapt a PH2 over to this. It does not come with a charger, but this will allow you to plug this into any of your other Whoop chargers. Um, if this was your first Whoop, you'd be shit out of luck because you can't do anything with this. Uh, there is a, a Black Friday edition that is offered that comes with two batteries, a charger, an extra set of props, and a black version of one of these little micros. Um, first of all, where do I even begin? Let's start with the batteries themselves. These things are Sag City. They are a generous helping of sagaroni and cheese. The three of these could band together and form a musical troupe that would travel through the South and call themselves the Saggy Bottom Boys. It is that terrible, guys. Flight times on these batteries for me um, have been a lot of times 30 to 60 seconds unless I'm basically just hovering in place. If you give it any bit of forward momentum at all, even if you're just sort of like puddling around, um, your flight times are going to be the shortest of any that you have ever seen. Now, I built up a custom whoop that I featured on the channel like over a year ago. And I was like, maybe I'm just not familiar with flying whoops anymore. Let me fly that. And it flew great. Perfect. Uh, and that's like a bunch of old components. I want the new stuff. And I think that the culprit um, major problem of this not being this battery in the flight time itself, um, because this is terrible. This one, is you can see, is already puffed. It's maybe seen three cycles. I think this actually looked like this after the first cycle. These batteries are extremely weak. Um, and it was only a flight session of about... 30 seconds that may have done this and the reason why it was so short guys was because out of the box this seems this thing ships with an unflyable tune an unflyable batch of settings there is no way even an experienced indoor pilot like myself i have a dozen or more videos flying around in my house um, I'm probably not going to win the Tiny Whoop Invitational, but I can easily fly through chairs and other little small things around my house with no problems. And this thing I could not keep in the air without crashing it in just a few seconds. So what was the issue? Well, Mr. Burns, my nemesis, actually came to the rescue in one of the Facebook groups with a helpful piece of advice, which was to take this from DShot C and lower it to D-Shot 300. That is an absolutely necessary step. Um, but even after that, the tune is still really twitchy and very hard to fly in tight spaces. And that's why you want one of these smaller things, guys. This is 65 millimeter. It's not 75 millimeter. It should be plenty capable of flying in tight spaces. This has a real problem with it. So if you do buy it, go ahead, switch D-Shot 300 on immediately. Go ahead and change your gyro settings uh, PID loop to 8K, 2K. And then also I would really recommend go ahead, ahead and loading up Project Mockingbird for brushed 
uh, or brushless settings on here right away because it's absolutely unflyable. Now, a bad tune on a larger quad is still annoying, but it's not as problematic. But seeing as how these micros are geared to people starting the hobby, this is probably going to be a lot of people's first quadcopter, first experience into FPV. Having a terrible, unflyable tune like that is inexcusable. Beta FPV, what are you doing? Um, you guys have been one of the most reliable, best release companies, a safe bet all around. So what did I do to deserve this terribly underprepared shipment of this quadcopter? What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectful? Did anyone even fly one of these before you sent them out the door? Like, I'm just completely baffled. Now, other people have gotten other experiences some people are getting longer flight times maybe there was a variety of tunes that these shipped with who knows um one thing is for sure that part of those low flight times are not just the bad tune or the bad batteries it is the motors and because these are beta fpv's 0802 22000 kv motors and a lot of people are saying that's simply too high it's too damn high so they are actually starting to ship this with a 19,000 kV version. And a lot of times, just, just make note guys, the kV measurement on a lot of these motors, especially the little micro ones, are hard to measure. Sometimes they may fluctuate. So who knows how high the kV on this actually may be. Um, supposedly the 19,000 kV version, if you're lucky enough to get one of those, is much more reasonable. But for those who got in on the first week or two or three, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this? Come on, Beta FPV. Like, Happy Model Mobula 6 is basically just going to beat you by default um, if they can provide any halfway decent thing that doesn't burn up when you plug it in. And Happy Model, while a lot of their products are very untested, um, they have a lot of problems with quality control, one thing they do excel at is giving you a flight experience that is very, very good. And you have now failed at this. So hoping that these guys can pull it out again on the next round. Um, this is really making me want to try beta FPV stuff less and less. So anyway, traditionally beta FPV has been very, very good. The HX100 um, toothpick mine and fly that I flew was in my top five list. It was second place just behind the Diatone GTB. So Beta FPV is still very much capable of producing a great model out of the box. I don't know what happened here. I think that maybe they saw people clamoring for wanting one more indoor whoop for winter. And guys, we will want that till the end of time. People can't fly outside during the winter. I mean, I can because I'm in Texas, but a lot of people can't. They want these things, guys. So just release a new one every year. Make it flyable and don't ever 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 do this again thanks guys oh, don't you ever do this